Ever wanted to try your hand at being a fugitive, but you're just too pretty to risk going to prison? There's a few board games which can give you the thrill of the chase, because if there's one thing board gamers are good at, it's going unnoticed. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. No, Timmy, you're hiding. I'm the one counting. Oh, okay. Ninety, twenty, ready or not. Oh no, you found me. My turn. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. There's one game that started the hidden movement, movement, and that's Scotland Yard. But 30 years on, is it still worth playing? Sherlock Holmes, consulting detective. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. The name's Frank Justice, and that's what I deliver. Let's catch this rat bastard. Yes, adorable catchphrase. I only wish your parents had given you the middle name Swift or Timely. You're two days late. Hey, I'm not the schmuck who moved Scotland Yard to London. No, quite. Not that specific schmuck. I suspect your list of credits is far greater. Mr. X secretly moves around the board using London's always reliable public transport system. He writes down the number of his new location and covers it with a ticket showing the mode of transport he used. I'm going by bus. The wheels on the gas go on the bus. On the bus. On the bus. That rat bastard has taken the bus. Goddamn commie bastard. Forget this petty thief. We have a greater mystery to unravel. That of this horseless carriage. Mr. X can get around the board quicker using tubes and buses, but there are less of these lines on the board, allowing the detectives to narrow their search. This gives the detectives a flavor of reading clues and acting on them. It also allows Mr. X to control how much information he shares. If he wants to confuse them, he can just get taxis everywhere. This dastard fugitive has taken 20 taxis in a row. What does it tell us? That he hasn't heard of Uber. Elementary, my dear Justice. At London prices, he's going to have to rob another bank soon to be able to afford it. To give the detectives a lead, Mr. X must reveal his location at certain points in the game. I'm here, come and get me. This kills the suspense. It feels like a cheap forced way to balance the game that betrays its theme. The detectives don't earn this information and it immediately supplants any hard work they've done. We've ascertained from the witness at the cafe that the perpetrator has a pathological obsession for ketchup. I've cross-referenced all the places he could buy such an item with all our reported monkey sightings. We'll catch him yet. He's at St. Paul's Cathedral. And what in blazes gives you that idea? He just sent us a selfie. A selfie, you say? Scotland Yard has moments of tension for Mr. X and crime solving for the detectives, but it can feel very samey. Mr. X reveals himself. The detectives try to corner him as he runs to the other side of the board, only to repeat it all again a few turns later. This rapscallion's thwarted us again. We must learn from our mistakes. Learning? I will not betray my country by learning something. Thou shalt not learn. It's in the US Constitution. Or at least I think it is. I haven't read it. Mr. X has two secret movement tokens which let him move without revealing which transport he took. This takes the joy out of the detective's turn for that round, and again feels like Scotland Yard having to break the fun of its game to make it work. He's vanished into thin air. No doubt the work of Moriarty. We were getting too close, and the BBC wanted to string it out for another 45 minutes. God damn commie bastards. If Scotland Yard was all that existed, I would play it. I'm grateful that it blazed a trail for all the other games in this video. But once you go Jack, you never go back. National treasure Jack the Ripper, which means Jack the Great in Australian, is so loved for his stupendous stabbings that we named our national flag after him. Letters from Whitechapel is a board game that tries to paint him as a villain. I'm Jack the Ripper. I whip things. That's the paper we need to play the game. But I'm Jack the Ripper. Letters from Whitechapel takes place over four nights. Each night, Jack the Ripper must kill his victim and escape through the streets back to his secret hideout. Ah. The infamous Jack the Ripper. I could have caught him. Well, why didn't you then? I'm fictional. I don't exist in real life, just on paper. Much like any proof that you're a detective. The police know only one thing, where the murder took place. Every other piece of information is up to them to find by searching for clues. Search for clues on the corner of Newark Street and Sydney Street. 
Yes. We found a kinder chocolate. That's German for child. He's trying to tell us something. The sick bastard. As the police find clues, they create a trail of Jack's movement. I can't emphasize enough how brilliant this is. The theme comes through in the way this game makes you feel. By golly, I've made a breakthrough. He's headed southeast of Whitechapel High Street. I had a hunch's hideout was down there. We'll catch this child murderer yet. We'll be onto him quicker than my brother or my second wife. Don't be so poetic, Justice. And it's even stronger for Jack. The police have surrounded you. They're so close they can hear your heartbeat. How can you give them the slip? I've never been more stressed in a board game than playing Jack in this game. Shh, buddy. We have to stay very quiet or they'll catch us. Yes, the chips really are down. And it doesn't get more tense than when the police search for clues on the spot you're standing. But as long as they don't make an arrest, you're safe. Search him for clues at 42. Hello, Mr. Policeman. Hey kid, what are you doing here? There's a child murderer roaming the streets. Jack can use his carriage or alleyway tokens to elude his chasers, or double back on himself to confuse them. Where did he go? Did you arrest him? He wasn't here, just some kid. That was him. I told you. He's a child murderer. Ah, oh, not again. This is like the time I arrested that 10 year old violinist for being a kiddie fiddler. Letters from Whitechapel is a masterpiece. There's no luck, it's pure brain versus brain. When I'm done with this run, he'll be eating his food through a straw. Like a milkshake? I like milkshakes. I like pink ones. You goddamn son of a rat bat. Don't let him get in your head, Justice. He's playing mind games with you. He's clearly one of Moriarty's minions, a demonic sociopath schooled in the art of the Machiavellian. I love both sides, feeling like a detective, discussing the evidence and proposing theories about where Jack is, and the pure adrenaline of playing Jack, trying to stay calm every time they mention the number you're hiding on. If he went that way, he'd be on 33 yeah. by now. Well, I can check on 33 yeah. next turn. What's that noise? It's incredibly hard for Jack, especially with five alert detectives, I've never seen Jack win, and with chatty detectives, it can easily take three hours to play. I wish it was half that length. But I'd rather watch three hours of a Christopher Nolan film than one hour of Michael Bay. I'm giving away a copy of Letters from Whitechapel with this video. To enter, simply subscribe to this channel, like this video, and join the discussion below. If you find the gameplay of Letters from Whitechapel a little too dry, or the theme a little too wet, there's always Spectre Ops which focuses on the less upsetting atrocities that only the future can provide. You've been wearing the same suit for weeks, which could be the reason your wife left you, but is more likely the result of it. Your eyes are red, not from crime, but from the new contact lenses you've started to wearing to look more young. Every single decision in your life can be traced back to when you wet yourself in class, aged, um, five and a half, which has tormented you not because of the humiliation, but because you're worried you might have enjoyed it. Am I close? What happened to your hat? I've rebooted. I'm sarcastic Rain Man Sherlock now. You've what? Rebooted. I'm still Sherlock Holmes, I've just changed my form. Like the Doctor. Who? Exactly. In a dystopian world, at least a few days into the future, one resistance agent has infiltrated a government facility. He must sabotage three evil government things before escaping. I'm not some glorified security guard, I'm Frank Justice of Boston's Finest. Boston's Finest what? Functioning alcoholics? Hey! No, that's not fair. You're hardly functioning. Uh. And then you could say, not to feed you lines or anything, I thought you were Sherlock Holmes' consulting detective, not Sherlock Holmes' insulting detective. And then I might respond, you thought? Well, that's your allowance up for the day. It's the kind of witty back and forth people have come to expect from me. Spectre Ops is inspired by Clue, the great museum caper, a game from the 90s with some really cool ideas and some pretty dated ones that solved Scotland Yard's reveal problem. Every time the thief steals a painting, the guards can see where he stole it from. This lets the thief decide when to risk giving away their location. In Spectre Ops, the hunters have a harder time of tracking the agent because he can move anywhere between one and four spaces on a turn. But if the hunters are ever in sight of him, the agent's figure goes on the board. There's a real sense of hiding behind walls and keeping to the shadows. We can see you. How? I'm hiding behind my hands. We can see your hands. But I'm hiding behind my hands. I know, but your hands are a part of you. They're your hands. But I'm hiding behind them. Oh my god! The hunters don't just have to catch the agent to win, they have to kill him. 
If they're ever in sight of him, they can roll a dice to try and shoot him. I've got him in my sights. The tip of your gun is greasy. Not from gun lubricant, but from your unwashed hair. Seeing the young boy reminded you of your childhood accident. You figure if you kill yourself, you take the story with it. Do you have to keep doing that? I'm sorry, are you asking me a question or are you recounting what your teacher said to you at the time? <sighs> Just some of the witty repartee I promised. Nice eye rolling, by the way. You'll make a passable companion. The fact that being caught isn't game over for the agent means that the hiding is not quite as tension-filled in Spectre Ops as in Whitechapel. Spectre Ops jazzes up its hidden movement by giving each character special powers. The beast can smell the agent if they're within four spaces. Use your beast senses to track him. I don't need that. I have my mind palace. He's there. Uh -huh. Wow. Could you use that mind palace to find out where my wife left me? No, it's far too much effort in post-production. It was probably just your face. The agent can set off smoke grenades, stun the hunters, or disable the vehicle they travel around in. The hunters won't always know when or which power the agent has used, making Spectre Ops a much less pure deduction game than Whitechapel. I personally like the air of mystery and the added story it creates. Spectre Ops is a blast. I love its zoomed-in feel of running around a complex trying to stay out of sight. The special powers keep things interesting, I only wish there was more of them, and it's a beautiful production. At two hours it's still longer than I'd like, but it's staying in my collection. When it comes to bringing thematic flavour to a hidden movement game, nothing can compete with Fury of Dracula. Yes! Hunting Count Dracula! The game is afoot! No it's not, it's a map of Europe! Someone's put garlic in Dracula's Bloody Mary, and he's pissed. He's running around Europe trying to mature vampires, kill hunters, and run down the clock. I'm Dracula, king of the vampires. Ooh. Really? He was hard enough to understand before. I've come to suck your blood. You want to do what to my blood? Dracula tracks his movement by playing cards representing the locations he's visited. The hunter's job isn't just to find Dracula, they need to clear his recent hideouts to make sure he's not maturing a vampire there. But he may have laid a trap instead. Rats! What? What happened? Rats. He's attacked us with rats. The rat bastard. To win, the hunters must find and kill Dracula. Combat is a complicated but interesting battle of wits. I use my fang. Ah! I deflect with a crucifix. Oh no, church. For the hunters, there's a fine balance between spreading out to catch Dracula's trail and staying together to share items and best use characters' special abilities. There's a hundred ways to skin this bat, and plenty of room for disagreement. I'm headed to Naples, you stay here. No, I want to bring someone to justice. I think we should split up. Naples is mine. You think we should split up? Does last month mean nothing to you? I remember enjoying ice cream all over your Naples. What the? Don't worry, homoerotic innuendo is a center point of Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock. Speaking of which, I'd like to come about your Benedict. Whoa, that's a bit too much for me. I don't think I can stomach it. Great, you're a natural. Fury of Dracula is full of thematic content. There's huge decks of items and events. Dracula can place fog and storms and block roads. I've played this game five times and there are still tokens I haven't used. Rules I haven't needed. I'm going to escape with the wolf, I think. The game's strength is also its weakness. There's so much going on that you'll be checking the rulebook constantly, which extends an already super long game. Dracula is a four hour long beast. This is taking ages. Have I won yet? The reward for that is that it tells a different story each time you play. You will only like this game if you buy into that. If you want pure hidden movement, don't play this game. The sheer chaos of all the variables at play means that I've seen games fizzle out very early with the luck of the draw working against Dracula. But I've also seen multiple games come down to the last turn, catching Dracula at the last minute and shoving that final stake through his heart. Or him escaping into the night. Your mince meat, Dracula. Or as the French say, steak. Ta-ta! At its best, Dracula will feel trapped, outnumbered and outgunned, requiring creative use of his sneaky tricks to outwit the hunters. Fury of Dracula isn't for everybody, but for some it will sing like no other. For some, the most fun part of a hidden movement game is the hiding, which only one player gets to do. In Nuns on the Run, six players hide, 
one player hunts. I know as an American you might feel a bit uncomfortable in this new role. I'm Irish, I practically am a nun. I didn't mean the nun part, I meant the running. You're a naughty nocturnal novice nun needing nightly nourishment, so you sneak out of your chamber to fetch the object of your desires. I must make haste to the pharmacy to fetch my laudanum. As a nun, it truly is the opiate of the masses. What? This game has drug use in it? I'm offended. You realize the second game was about killing women, right? The novices have to stay out of sight of the patrolling abbess and prioress. If they catch you, you must walk back to bed until you're out of sight and can sneak off again. Nuns on the Run has a detection system that's wonderfully thematic. Each round you roll a dice to see how much noise you made. Depending on how fast you ran that round, and how near the guard nuns are, they may hear noise in your direction. What was that noise? It was nothing. It was just me, God. Continue walking towards the chapel, Prioress. God's will commands you. Oh, okay. Thanks, God. Did you get my Christmas list? This encourages you to move slow, but if you're too cautious, you'll never win, because it's the first novice back to bed with their item that gets the victory. More than any other game, this feels like hide and seek. If a guard is walking up a corridor, you can sneak behind her. She can't see you if her back is turned. And there's lots of little rooms and confessional booths to hide in, as you hope the hunter will pass you by. For these thematic touches to work, the game relies on some rules intricacies that can make the game annoying to learn at first but once I got my head around it, it was worth the effort. With lots of people hiding, Nuns on the Run will never be as thinky as other hidden movement games, but it's a lot of fun and the light, silly theme inspires great table talk. Man. Nuns? Hey? Has anyone seen Sister Act? <laughs> what if the hunters were moving in secret as well? That's an insane idea. Surely it could never work. Escape from aliens in outer space eats surely it could never work for breakfast. Thank heavens for the minds of science who have bestowed upon us these new realms full of discovery and wonder. Yeah, space travel's come a long way. There'll be commercial space shuttles soon. In America. Space? What are you blathering on about, Justice? I was speaking of this erasable notebook. One moment you've written something, and the next it's gone. Think of the applications. This is a team game. The humans are trying to escape the space station through escape pods. The aliens are trying to kill the humans and turn them into aliens. But nobody knows who's on whose team. You take turns to move. If you move into a grey, dangerous sector, you're at risk. You draw a card. The card tells you what to declare to the other players. Either you have to say your exact location, or you can lie and say wherever you want. I'm at G10. I swear. Oh yeah? Do you swear on the life of your potato friend? <laughs> yes. But they don't know which card you drew. They have no idea when you're lying and telling the truth. Every bit of information is untrustworthy. You can track it all on your whiteboard map, trying to piece together where your opponents are. I'm on to you. I know exactly where you are. Oh yes, Justice. I'm sure one day you'll have as many leads as a map of Yorkshire. The aliens are trying to pretend they're human to not appear a threat, and the humans are pretending to be aliens so they won't get killed. I'm a K-8. Definitely. That's where I am. You're acting human. Doesn't that go against all of your police training? The tension and mistrust is palpable. Another player announces they're in the space next to you. J7. Do they know you're there? Are they coming to kill you? Go away, I'm not in J6. Is it always fun? Not when you get eliminated early, but it's always an experience, and it's completely unlike any game out there. In Escape from Aliens and Outer Space, you have to embrace the chaos. If you like structure or feeling like you know something, anything, then this isn't the game for you. My mind palace isn't working. There's no logic, there's nothing to go on. How do you keep winning? I like milkshakes. If you're interested in buying any of these games, you can support Actual Old by using the links in the description. Remember, to win the copy of Letters from Whitechapel, simply subscribe to this channel, like this video, and join the discussion below. If you like this video, please check out my previous videos because you'll probably like them too. I'm Actual Old on Facebook and Twitter. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.